first of all, G man, I know a lot of my subscribers know you already anyway, but for those who don't, just introduce yourself, you know, talk a little bit about your channel, how you got into boxing, some of your favorite fighters over the years, some of your earliest boxing memories, just general stuff. Yeah, so you know, I'm sure most people would know me as well. Like, you know, the channel's been growing a lot lately. Um, I'm mainly on my YouTube channel. To, it's pretty much the same as what you do, Hat Man. It's like reviews of fights, previews of fights, the latest boxing news. I try and kind of keep it as simple as I can. Like, I don't want to, I'm, I'm not someone who's going to overanalyze something. I just try and keep it as kind of just basic to get like everyone, the casual audience involved, everything mm. kind of like that. So I always try and get like, if there's news coming, I like being like one of the, the first channels to get that out there. Like the day Manny Pacquiao retired, I was like, right, got to get home, got to get video made. Mm -hmm. In terms of like what got me into boxing, it was, it's, it's funny, right? Because a bit like yourself, I was, I got into boxing like by Muhammad Ali, but I think yeah. you were inspired by his fight. I was actually inspired by his trolling. Like one of my <laughs> friends, yeah, literally. I knew about boxing. I, knew, I I watched a couple of, as a casual, I watched a bit of Manny Pacquiao, a bit of Floyd Mayweather when I was younger. But one of my friends, when I was about like 17, started showing me clips of Muhammad Ali, just trolling his opponents, just Sonny List and George Foreman. And yeah. I actually thought it was funny. So the more I started looking into it, I ended up watching his fights and ended up just being amazed by the 70s heavyweights. Like I watched Joe Frazier, George Foreman, Ken Norton, Chavis Lyle. I watched all them fights. And that's just what got me into boxing to the point where I thought I can give this a go. So when I was about 17, I went to the boxing gym. I'd done, I'd had a few amateurs. It wasn't anything special, to be honest. But since then, it's just been religiously watching it. Every, mm -hmm. like every, any fight I can get to. I go to a lot of small hall shows when they're on. And that's kind of my whole boxing kind of experience there. Like in terms of favorite fighters, obviously, Gerald McClellan would be one of my favorites. The kind of the G man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I actually got the G-Man name from my old box gym, but I love watching him. I love big punchers. So yeah. Gerald McClellan, Nigel Ben, you know, even though he can be annoying, David Hay, I just yeah. love people who just go for knockouts. I'm not, I've never been one to, like, I I respect the guys like Floyd Mayweather, you know, Rigondeaux, who, you know, are students of the game. They They know how to slip punches. They know how to, you know, box rings around their opponents. But I just love big punters. I love seeing guys going in there trying to take your head off. Like, even yeah. if they're not talented, like David Lemieux, I'd watch him any day of the week because I know chances are he's going to get a good knockout. So I've always yeah. been like that. Just biggest punters in history I can find, I'll watch them. You know, yeah. Ernie Shavers, Ron Lyle, the kind of guys like that. And I'll even know people who are punters that you never heard of. Mm. You know, like, I remember, I think, Monty Barrett saying, what was the guy's name? Eric Kirkland or something like that was, like, a big punch. So I started looking up him to just see, even though he was like a journeyman, just to see like what kind of knockouts this guy has. Yeah, he said that Eric Kirtland was the hardest puncher he ever faced. Like a harder mm -hmm. puncher than Klitschko, Hay, and all the other guys that he fought. Yeah. And it's crazy like that people can't um, like understand that. Like just because they're not, they don't have like world titles, they don't have a great record, doesn't mean they're not a big puncher. Like Darnell Boot knocked it on Stevenson out, dropped Andre Ward, Kovalev, all that. Yeah, He's a journeyman. But man, that guy can crack. And you see yeah. some of his knockouts. They're not just they're they're like proper knockouts. And even recently e even recently, sorry, even recently, uh just the other day, Jake Paul came out. No, sorry, Logan Paul came out and said that uh KSI hits harder than Mayweather. Now I know yeah. the casuals are never gonna believe that. I believe <laughs> it. Like like oh, yeah. KSI is like what 180, 190 pounds, and he's swinging with all his weight. Of course, he's going to hit harder than, than Mayweather yeah. when he's, you know, when he's that size and he's swinging like that. But in the in the mind of a lot of people, they think no, you you can't punch that hard unless you are a world class fighter. I remember watching an interview with Mayweather Senior, and he was kind of like downplaying punching power. I mean, obviously, punching power is important, but he was saying, "Look, punching power is not the be all and end all." Yeah, he said you could get one of these bums off the street here in the gym and he'll punch hard. He'll knock you out if you let him. Yeah. But he can't do anything else other than punch hard. He can't defend himself. Probably can't take a punch, you know, all that kind of thing. I know it's crazy. Like there's so many journeymen who like you give them their, your, their best shot. They'll knock anyone out. Yeah. But can they take it? Can they deliver it? Like you see some guys, they're like, they've got two left feet. 
even though they can you know, even though they can swing and they can hit hard, they can't plant their feet. They can't actually land on a moving target. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true, man. But um, on your channel, one of the things I, I've only done maybe two or three interviews. I've interviewed other YouTubers and just you know people that are interested in boxing, but I've only done one interview with an actual fighter. You've done quite a few interviews. I remember the mm -hmm. first interview I saw on your channel was Spike O'Sullivan. And mm -hmm. since then, you've, you've done several more. So how did the interviews come about? I guess I just wanted to see kind of, because like, I'll be, I'll be frank, right? It's kind of an, an arrogant kind of side. Like I've seen guys doing interviews, you know, not even like boxers, just in general. And I've thought like, mm -hmm. these guys have no charisma. Like these guys mm -hmm. are doing like, interviews that I could do. So I just thought, why don't I just do it? Why don't I just... And I hate seeing guys who it's clear they're reading off a script. Like yeah. you ever see that in any like it doesn't have to be boxing be any, when it's just like, how's this? What's this? I'm just like, mate, like seriously, you put like you know, you put someone with insomnia to sleep listening to that. <laughs> so yeah, you would. So I said, right, I'm gonna try because I went to the same gym at the time as Spike O'Sullivan, and that was mm -hmm. before he fought Mungia. So it was quite easy to get um, an interview with him. And then since then I just kind of like I've interviewed both male and female and mm -hmm. like it's good fun it's just i try and keep it as casual as it can be like i don't want to be one of these guys who's just he's hey, trying to start beef with one fighter to another or trying to just you know just answer the same questions like a fighter's never going to tell you if they're having a bad camp so as far as i'm concerned there's no point asking that question just mm -hmm. try and get a bit of their personality out and that's the main reason why i do it like i'm interviewing yeah. a, pff, i don't even know how many fighters at this stage probably about seven eight and my way of looking at it is just do something different stand out don't be the same guy if, if coogan's asked him this rob tepper's asked him this really like this is going to make a much difference if you asked and try and do something different yeah yeah and how about the other uh interviewees how did you get in contact with them just through dms literally mate um i think jay harris is it was a real cool guy actually um just dm'd him on instagram and said would you fancy doing an interview and yeah no problem mate what they suit you pretty I think that most people don't realize how approachable most fighters are and mm -hmm. how like willing most fighters are to give interviews to people because as far as they're concerned like someone's reaching out to me yeah it's good to go like you know I don't think I've ever you know messaged a fighter like I've never really messaged any big time fighters but I only ever messaged fighter they've said no I can't or they've not acknowledged it in some way yeah yeah people will be surprised because you know boxing is not like football mm -hmm. boxers have to sell tickets they have to sell pay-per-views and interacting with the fans is one way that they get to do that. So they do tend to be more approachable than, let's say, I don't know, Premier League footballer or, you know, some of the other sports out there. A fighter himself, especially if he's not an elite level, Anthony Joshua or whatever, he, his livelihood depends on how many tickets he can shift. You know, obviously all fighters do, but I'm saying with AJ, he don't really have to try. Yeah. Eddie Hearn yeah. does what he does sky or whatever do what they do and the tickets are going to sell but with right. other fighters they have to make an effort themselves to actually sell tickets and like i say interacting with fans making themselves accessible is one of the ways that they do this so yes yeah, it's, it's true a lot of people don't realize how accessible these fighters are i mean i've been on youtube now how long 10 over 10 years and i've never actually reached out to any fighters but they've reached out to me you know mm -hmm. and and, and you know, that just shows how fighters are actually paying attention to YouTubers now. <laughs> you know, that surprised okay. me when they when they first started like contacting me, I was surprised. Yeah, like I got messaged by God, all kind of different fighters, Dylan White, Laura Sacoli, you know, several others who reached out to me. So if if they're reaching out to me, that means they're accessible to other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I remember I've had the same as well, like so many fighters, Nick Webb. And I was actually criticizing him after his win over uh, Kurt, was it? No, Pfeiffer. And uh, mm. I think I said, like, his chin's about as good as a two pound note, but he got the job done. And straight away, I get, <laughs> I get a DM off him on Twitter. And I actually, he appeared in the comment section of my video. I was like, I was like, oh. And then I was like, oh, did I really? Oh. He watches my videos now. I'm like, I have to say that. I felt bad straight away. <laughs> yeah, that's mad. Um, who else was it? Uh, Jarrell Miller used to watch some of my videos. I was. I was and I, it was a similar situation where Jer uh, was it Andy Ruiz or Jerome Miller? I think it was Jerome Miller. He just yeah. fought. I think he fought. Fred, I think he was telling about this. He fought Fred Cassie or someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. I think it was Cassie. And 
I was talking about, because I think he called out Andy Ruiz or there was talk about him possibly fighting Andy Ruiz. And so in my post fight, in my, in my post fight video, I was like, yeah, I'd like to see the two fat boys fight. <laughs> and Jarrell Miller turned up <laughs> in the comment section saying, oh, you're, you're funny. You got jokes about the two fat boys. <laughs> so yeah, fighters, that, that's the great thing about boxing is that a lot of the fight, not all of them, but a lot of the fighters are very, very approachable. They're down to earth. They will interact with you, you know, because it's not like that with Premier League footballers. No. As far as I'm aware, yeah, you're not really going to get footballers interacting with the public like that to that extent anyway. No. I, I think like most fighters nowadays, they do. You'd be surprised at how many probably would watch YouTube videos because of, like, us, because we're kind of given an, out, like, we're given an objective, an outsider, objective standpoint from an outsider. Like, if you're in tra- camp with your coach, He's trying to keep your morale up high. He's not going to really criticize you too much, you'd imagine. Or you try and be saying, oh, you're doing this. We're like proper, well, he needs to do this. Why is he doing this? And at least maybe it gives them something that they can think about. 